Whenever I ask people what they want to see from this channel, I get told over and over, why don't you just film like a day in your life? But I've got that comment so many times. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to take you guys along with me. We're going to spend a couple days. We're going to go on a trip, see some mountains, do a little bit of camping. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing here in Alaska in the summertime. Stay tuned. <music> July 2022 has been the longest month that I can remember. Brooke and I were down in Valdez less than 30 days ago, but it seems like a year ago. It's just been such a long drawn out month. During the nine days that we stayed down there in Valdez, I found a Kawasaki KLR 650 motorcycle for sale locally right there in the town of Valdez. So I picked it up and I rode it the 400 miles back from Valdez to Fairbanks. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna get ready to take a little bit of a motorcycle trip. I got a buddy named Brian down in Delta Junction. He's a YouTuber too, has a small channel he just started called Backcountry Rich. I'll leave the link in the description. I'm gonna be hammock camping just because of space. You gotta pack small on a motorcycle, so I got a hammock and an underquilt, which is very important, keep your hammock warm, and a cheap ultralight sleeping bag. I've also got a big heavy blanket in the other saddlebag in case it gets too cold. Now, I've been trying to talk Brian into hammocking, so he's going to steal a hammock from one of his kids and see if he, uh, if he likes camping that way. Our plan is we're going to try to ride up into the mountains, get on the pipeline roads, just do some trail riding. But first, I've got about a 130, 140 mile ride to take just to get down to the mountains south of Delta Junction. Now the very first vehicle I ever owned myself was a motorcycle. I bought it when I was 16, I think, and uh, spent a summer riding motorcycle with all my camping gear strapped on the back. When our kids were little, I had a Honda Goldwing, and that was the last bike I had. And I, well, I sold that motorcycle and I kind of rode off motorcycling until the kids were out of school and older. It just seemed like an unnecessary risk. But now that the kids are all adult age, I'm enjoying riding again. I've put almost a thousand miles on this bike since I brought it back from Valdez. So here's the plan. I want to get gas here at Hilltop. Hilltop Truck Stop is north of Fairbanks. It's kind of a real jumping off point for a lot of adventures to the north. People heading up to the North Slope, going to the Yukon River. This is where they get gas. From here we're going to go down. We're going to take the back way to North Pole. And then from North Pole, we're going to jump on the Richardson Highway and we're going to head all the way down to Delta Junction and then south of Delta, down into the Alaska Range of Mountains. There's a campground down there called Donnelly Creek Campground. I've stayed at it dozens of times. Nice little place. A really beautiful view of the mountains. I don't think I could ask for any better weather. That's just beautiful out today. T-shirt weather, pretty much. Right here, we're kind of between North Pole and Eielson Air Force Base, heading southeast. About 50 miles down the road, I had to stop and throw some clothes on. The problem was, uh, the weather was still beautiful, but farther to the southeast, it's getting quite chilly. I've got some rain gear and I've got a thick wool sweater, so I'll throw all that stuff on before I go any farther south. Get a drink of water and hit the road. I've had this same Heli Hansen rain jacket for 20 years. Sure blocks the wind. Day two. Brian and I camped last night down here at Donnelly Creek Campground. And I got up this morning way before he did. And uh, I'm taking some time to feed the birds. Check this out. These are gray jays, also called camp hey, robbers. Come on. One of my favorite birds. It's like, like a giant chickadee, really. I've seen them in Minnesota, but I don't think I've ever seen them anywhere else in the lower 48. If you get the right group that hang out at a campground where they're treated well, they'll eat right out of your hand. You guys are going to love the view out here. Now this is the Delta River Valley. The Delta River runs through this, this flat. Also, so does Donnelly Creek. But on the other side of this valley is the Alaska Range. 
and the mountains rise right up from the other side of the flat valley. It's just beautiful country down through here. And this is Donnelly Creek. Nice and clear. It's a beautiful little creek. Now the one thing about this campground is it's a very windy area down here. So if you get a lot of really strong wind, this can be a really breezy place to camp. But you can't beat the view. Well, you can see my buddy Brian's black hammock right there. Mine is off in the trees on the left-hand side. When I woke up this morning, he was nowhere to be found. I don't know if he got a cramp or just didn't like sleeping in a hammock. But uh, I've been up for about four hours. I haven't seen him yet. Oh, there he is. A couple weeks ago, Brian and I went camping. Went fishing. Didn't catch any fish, so we were technically camping. I got rained on and I went and slept in the truck for until 10.30. Well, son of a gun if I didn't get teased for it. He sure did. So I pulled a Dave this morning. So, uh, what happened, man? I had to bail out of the hammock. I got, I don't know, I got claustrophobic. So I jumped in the back of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably been up for five hours. Had the whole place to myself. Well, if it's lunchtime for us, it's lunchtime for the birds, too. Here they come. Man, I could feed Gray Jays all day. They are the coolest. I'm gonna hold on to this cracker and see how long he'll pull on it. Come on. I might have ruined it. <laughs> Went to get that cracker and I couldn't get it. <laughs> get both of them. You might not be able to see this, but I got a fork full of tuna fish right there. What's he gonna pick? I got buffalo flavored tuna and they want the cracker. Well, Brian and I decided to stay another day. We had fun sitting around the fire, just shooting the breeze, doing nothing, eating a lot. Everybody left. It was Sunday, so we had the pick of the campground, any site we wanted. I was still hammocking, but Brian decided he'd had enough of that nonsense. Now for those folks out there interested in motorcycles who care to know, I'm riding a 2009 Kawasaki KLR650. I bought it with all the bags and touring kit, so that was really good. I didn't have to find any of that stuff. I love motorcycle camping. And Brian is riding a 1984 CR250 Honda. He's got a nice CR500 that he's restoring. I can't wait till that's done. But hopefully we'll get around and uh, get off our lazy rear ends and go do some riding today. If not... I still have 150 miles to ride tomorrow. Both of us have a YouTube channels. We spent the afternoon shooting B-roll. I absolutely love the smell of burning spruce. And this spruce is probably fire kilt spruce. I didn't ask, but Brian brought it along with him. And in this area in Delta, there's been several forest fires over the last 25 years. There's a lot of standing dead, fire-killed wood, and it's about the best firewood you can find anywhere. That's a pretty great fire, Brian. Well, thanks. I'm pretty much a fire expert. That's awesome. We sat around and enjoyed the camp all evening, chatted, did a whole lot of nothing, ate a bunch of food, and enjoyed this fire. We figured we'd ride the next day. When the next day came, that was a different story. So after a couple of nights camping in the campground down there in the mountains, I'm riding out of here today. Stopped here at the Baptist Church in Delta. I want to show you guys what I'm riding in today. Just a gigantic dust storm. Now the view from behind this church parking lot, you can see these 14,000 foot snow covered peaks on the other side of the flats. It's a beautiful view of the mountains, but you can't see anything right now because it looks like the Sahara Desert. But you guys the wind's blowing 50 miles an hour and it's full of silt. I didn't even bother to turn the camera on from the campground back to Delta Junction because the wind was blowing so hard it was shoving me all over the road. I stopped at a place called Rika's Roadhouse. This is about eight miles to the west of Delta Junction. And it's a place where the Tanana River crosses the highway. It's kind of tucked in the woods. And even when it's really windy in Delta, a lot of times it's really calm here. Brooke and I used to live about a mile 
from this very spot. We lived there for six years. Now, if you look across the Tanana River here, you can see it looks like smoke. There's so much dirt in the air from that 50 to 60 mile an hour wind. This little pull-off also has a really nice Forest Service outhouse. It's good to know where the good outhouses are. I'm going to grab myself a drink of water and try not to get blown off the highway on the way home. What a trip. Now here's an interesting little spot. This is right at the end of Delta Junction where you're leaving the Delta Junction area. As we're cruising along here, if you look off to the right-hand side, you can see where the pipeline crosses the Tanana River. That's the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. And then, of course, this really cool old iron bridge. On the other side of this bridge is Shaw Creek Flats. Shaw Creek Flats is a really good place to find a moose or two, and I'm going to keep my eyes peeled, and I bet we're going to find one. It does seem a little bit better on this side of the river for wind. Check these guys out. Nice big cow and a calf. That's really cool and in a good place where you can get a good look at them and take some good pictures. Well an hour and a half later and I'm back in the Fairbanks North Star Borough and I'm not too far from my place. The sun is out, the weather cleared up, the wind is gone. Thank goodness because that was a really nasty windstorm down there in Delta. I'm just driving up the mountainside on the very last leg of the trip. I'm almost home, and the weather here is fantastic. It's just perfect. But as you're about to find out, it didn't stay that way. Things didn't turn out the way I thought they would. About 45 minutes after I got back to my cabin, that windstorm from Delta Junction moved into the area in Fairbanks. Now Brooke and I have had this place since 2015 and I can honestly say I've never seen the wind blow this hard here before. All around I'm hearing trees busting off, big chunks of limb hitting the tin roof. It's uh, pretty terrifying. It's actually really nice to be inside for all this. Now Brooke and her friend Courtney are on the Yukon River so I hope this doesn't make it that far. Delta Junction is a really windy town, and Fairbanks generally isn't, so I figured when I rode out of Delta, I was going to be done with the wind. But that windstorm was just as bad here as it was in Delta, maybe even worse. I lost trees all over the property. I had this nice big old dead one fall on the roof of my storage shed. It did a pretty good number to the roof metal and the clear poly too. Well, honestly, that could have been a whole lot worse. Had a couple rips in those polycarbonate panels, the clear ones. I'm going to have to replace one of those panels. You can see it just kind of shattered from that impact. But everywhere else on this property, the story is the same. Just busted off trees, all kinds of down timber. That was quite the windstorm. Never seen it that bad here before. Two days ago, I pulled out of the driveway. Beautiful bluebird weather, sunny skies. I didn't think 48 hours later I'd be back here clearing away storm damage. Things just never work out the way you think, right? But I'll cut all this wood up, put it on the pile, and it'll run through the wood stove sooner or later. This tree darn near hit my motorcycle. That wouldn't have been any good. Well, thank you guys for coming along with me for a couple days of life here in interior Alaska. Things didn't exactly turn out the way I thought they would, but they never do, do they? Thanks for coming along. My name's Dave Whipple. You've been watching Push Radical. Be radical, eh? See you soon.